so they have three three parking spaces for people who want to come and visit the dreaming tree well it's nice that they have a sign to make it really clear Walt's dreaming tree and bond What's that sound, Kevin? Is that your bug? Yeah, those are cicadas. The one that looked like it was dead? And then it bit you. Not because you guys don't look closely at bugs. I do. I thought it was dead. And it didn't bite me. It just broke me with it. I was trying to decide if I was a delicious tree or something. Okay, so coming up here on the right is another sign. Oh. It does say, Welcome to the Dreaming Tree and Walt's Farm. This is private property. Be respectful. We hope you enjoy your time here. Isn't that nice? That's, well, that's why I decided not to bring my soda because I don't want to have a chance of dropping my bottle and being a lazy bum. Yeah. This is really neat what they've done. And the fact that they make it free. I mean, anyone can just come. And they are welcoming you. Wow, those things are loud. And they're saying something like a... Uh, how they refer to it, but a group of cicadas can reach like 400 decibels or something like that, like ears. Coming to Marceline, Elias purchased 45 acres in Marceline at $125 an acre. In the spring of 1906, the Disney family packed up their belongings and moved to Missouri. There's the tree. That's the tree right there. Oh, this is the son of the dreaming tree. This dreaming tree sapling was planted in 2004 by Bradford Disney Lund, who brought soil from the Magic Kingdom, water from the rivers of America, and added to the soil Disney farm. So this is the sun right here. So this one is living. I'm guessing that one is no longer living. <laughs> but this is the official dreaming tree with the belly botany that's in the book. The question is, can you see Walt Disney's initials carved onto the tree? <laughs> this large cottonwood tree still stands where Walt and Ruth played and waited in the spring that runs at the base. Daydreaming under the cottonwood, Walt Disney observed the whole world of nature. Belly botany. He apparently never outgrew his need for inspiration from his favorite private spot. On his trips back to Marceline, he always put aside time for reflection beneath it, spending hours alone. The tree is registered as a historic tree by American Forests. <gasps> what is that? Kevin found a note. It's a secret note. If you find the secret note... You will be shot in the back of the head. <laughs> no. Something hanging at the back of his head right now. I know it's a Waltz. I look up to you more than anyone I've ever known. I wish I could have met you. Thank you for inspiring me. I'll keep moving forward and never stop dream dreaming. Nathan Martinez. Wow, that's really wonderful. Put that back. Definitely put that back. That's someone's dream was to come here and see Walt's tree, because that's his dream. I want their dream. I need to touch the tree. So this tree in 1901, or 1910, somewhere around there, that is really neat. Oh, they put a bench if you want to sit and reflect. Oh, yeah. Now the barn, I guess, is, continues on this way. Well, they keep the ground maintained. So it's easy to walk. You don't have to walk through. Oh, there's the barn. Look, this is the first time we see it. Look at that. Wow. It's right there. Look at this land just surrounding it. It's spread out. Oh, here we go. They put a whole sign. As an adult, Walt wrote, to tell the truth, 
more things of importance happen to me and Marceline than have happened to me since or likely in the future. He drew upon the farm life for stories and characters became the cartoons. So dear to my heart, the movie, one of the structures was the, on the farm was the barn to represent his home in Marceline. In 1950, Walt recreated the barn for Marceline at his home in California. It became his happy place and the birthplace of Disney Imagineering. See, autographs and words to Walt are welcome on the interior of the barn. There's the water tower way off in the distance. Marceline Water Tower. So you can walk right inside. This swag in the barn roof is intentional. Walt wanted his barn to be a fun and unique place. Well, Tom was right. You should bring a pen or something to carve with. Because <laughs> you definitely have a lot of area. Oh, Kevin, look at the grasshopper. Crawling along there. You're not seeing what landed on my neck to scare me. Okay, where are we going to sign our name? Look, there's a bench too. Wow, a lot of people have come here. There's a lot of signatures on these walls. Oh, there's a picture over here that says something. that is. Our community at work, Walt Disney Barn. Oh, here. Welcome, Disney friends. We are so lucky. A wonderful man named Michael Brogy wrote a book just for us about the Walt Disney and his happy place park. Oh, and then they have a book here. Before you go, remember to leave your autograph on the interior of the barn, along with Disney friends from all over the world. Oh, there are pens over here, you guys. That's really cool. Someone left pens. 